Welcome back. So I've owned, unboxed and reviewed a lot of HP's 14 series Chromebooks from 2024 and subscribers will know that the one that impressed me the least was perhaps unsurprisingly the base spec 14A. That has the Intel M100 processor, 4GB of RAM and an HD display. As well as the display and the RAM specs, the overall build quality wasn't great. In this box, I might have the remedy to those spec issues, as this one has 8 gig of RAM and a brighter Full HD IPS display. But whether the build quality will see any difference, we're gonna have to take a look. So this version of the 14A clamshell Chromebook sits somewhere in between that lower end 4 gig of RAM model with the lower resolution and duller display, and the higher end HP 14A Chromebook Plus model that has a number of improvements, including the Intel Core i3 M305 processor, double the RAM and storage, and a Full HD IPS display at a brighter level of 300 nits. So the question for us to look at with this middle of the pack model and to help you consider whether it's right for you is which of those two models is it closer to, the lower end or the higher end? Let's get into the unboxing and take a look. First out of the box, it's the charger and wall plug. So all of these HP 14s will come with a 45 watt USB-C charger. And HP claim that a 45 minute charge is enough to get you back up to 50% of the battery's capacity. And that's a 47 watt hour battery in this one. And my power cord being in the UK, of course, has the British three pin plug. Getting into the Chromebook itself, and of course the important thing to differentiate this 14A is the model number. So it's the NF0003 model option. I'll leave my affiliate links to Amazon in the pinned comment as usual, so you can check for availability in your region. This one has the Intel N100 processor, eight gig of low power DDR5 RAM, and 128 gig of eMMC storage. I paid just 151 pounds, that's about 200 US dollars for this, brand new. That was from the official HP online store on eBay UK. You may have seen the deal I posted to this on X, Threads, or Blue Sky, as there were multiple units available. I also posted earlier in the year when there was a decent offer on this one at Argos in the UK, so it's certainly one I'm going to keep an eye on moving forward. So starting with build quality, initial impressions, and of course I've got to look at whether I can click the touchpad without opening it like we saw we could on the other 14A. And yep, spoiler alert, you can, so it's basically the same chassis, so that doesn't surprise me. It's not ridiculously flexible otherwise it's just disappointing that you can do that. I do like the mirrored HP logo on top, I do think that looks pretty smart but yeah obviously a full plastic build on this budget to entry level Chromebook. The colour of this one was advertised as Glacier Silver so essentially white on the top. I think there's another version that's more gray or certainly a darker color. So weight wise, this one doesn't feel too bad to me for a 14 inch Chromebook. So HP claim 1.45 kg, that's about 3.19 pound. I'll weigh it in myself too, and if it's much different, I'll flash up what I'm weighing it in at on screen now. So as for ports, this shouldn't take too long, I'm afraid. So on the left hand side, you've got a headphone and microphone combo audio jack a charge LED light, and the one USB-C port on this Chromebook for power, data, and display out. Then over on the right-hand side, it's just a very lonely full-size USB-A port. So just a very basic approach to connectivity on this Chromebook, certainly reminding you that it's entry level. No HDMI port for sure, and nothing like a micro SD card slot either to be found here. And for wireless, it's Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. Taking a look at the bottom of the Chromebook, and you have got a grill for the processor for ventilation, but you shouldn't need to have a fan on this model with the Intel N100. So it's purely for ventilation. Again, just using the same chassis they've used on the other models, but don't expect a fan to be kicking in at any point because you've got that Intel N100 processor. So with the Chromebook open now, the first thing you're going to notice is that the screen can't go back 180 degrees. This is as far back as it goes. If you wanted it to be convertible, you'd have to go for something like this, the HP X360 14B Chromebook from the range. That one also brings the benefit of a touchscreen too. It's definitely worth checking out, so watch to the end of this video and I'll link you to the initial impressions of not only that one, but also the video on that lower end 14A and the higher end 14A Chromebook Plus model. 
So taking a look at the keyboard deck, and it's an area that I'm pretty mixed about. So pros, we've got the speakers either side firing up at you. So that's not always something you get on a cheaper Chromebook. So that's certainly nice to see. That's going to help with audio. In terms of the keyboard layout itself, so you've got a lot of function keys here at the top but you notice they're that bit smaller. So whether you're a fan of packing more in with smaller keys or whether you'd rather just have less but with slightly larger keys and the keys themselves. So, you know, the key travel is okay. Um, I don't like the fact that the print on the keys is actually layered on top so you can feel it. That just feels a bit cheap to me. So all of the text is actually printed on top of the keys. Yeah, I mean, it, it's okay to type on. It's not the best. As I say, I've used this on the other models in the series. I don't really like the fact that in the UK, we've got the smaller size return key here on the right. So more in line to what you'd find in the US. That just takes a bit of getting used to with your muscle memory in the UK, if you're used to a bigger return key. And then the touchpad. So it's a fair size. Um, click mechanism is okay. I wouldn't say it feels loose as such, but it doesn't feel overly tight either. Just doesn't really compare, say, to the Ocean Glass branded touchpads you get on the 3 Series from Acer. So that's another entry-level Chromebook range, but I think somewhere where they just excel at the feel of the the touchpad, whereas this HP just isn't quite there, but perfectly serviceable and usable, just not the best on the market. I got some power onto the Chromebook and I'm set up with my test user now. Straight away I could see that the 14 inch Full HD display wasn't running at its full resolution. So I've updated that now, so it's running at 1920 by 1080. It is an IPS display, it's in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and it is nice and bright at a claimed brightness of 300 nits. And HP also claim it covers 62.5% of the sRGB color space with an 82% screen to body ratio. So yeah, the bezels don't seem too offensive, um, certainly on the sides, the top, and then the bottom slightly larger. And at the top of the display, we've got an HD webcam with a privacy slider. Again, if you did want a full HD webcam, you'd have to be looking at that higher spec Chromebook Plus model. So on initial impressions, things look fairly good here. HP have given us the brighter Full HD display and paired it back with that Intel M100 processor and importantly, 8 gig of RAM for decent everyday performance. The chassis is fairly common across the range with its pitfalls, but of course, we've got the very minimalistic ports on this one reminding us of that base entry level model. It feels to me like this should have been the entry level model of the range to start with. As expected with this spec, like Android gaming, like Real Racing 3, here should be no issue at all. If you have made it this far into the video, thank you. Hopefully it means it's worth a like, so please do give it a thumbs up. I'll get some use out of this one before I publish a full review. And whilst it is looking promising for an entry-level Chromebook on initial impressions, if you want to see what stepping up to that 14A Chromebook Plus model looks like, or even the convertible X360 14B model, those videos are on the left of your screen to watch next now. Or if you're more curious about what a downgrade to the base model in this range looks like and you want to know what to avoid in more budget Chromebooks, check out the video on the right of your screen now. Cheers.